First, I want to thank the organizers of this important event for inviting me again to participate as a speaker at this inaugural lecture. I would like to thank Dr. Jose Antonio Perez Turpin for coaching on me and I also take the opportunity to congratulate him on this high level and prestigious event. The title of this inaugural lesson that I'm going to develop today is a life of research around physical training with aquatic variable resistance. With this lecture, I want to show you all my professional experience that is linked to a passion for physical exercise and more specifically for the strength training and in general for the physical conditioning. That is why this inaugural lesson aims to show you all those findings that during the case of practice and scientific studies I have generated both with the work of the research groups that I direct and with the collaborations with other research groups that are references in this topic worldwide. I trust that you will find it of interest and above all that you can see in this inaugural lesson an intention to share a life of experience towards a better understanding of the basic aspects that facilitate its proper prescription and use. That is why today I want to show you the most important things that from our scientific studies we discovered to facilitate a safe and effective use of aquatic variable resistance for developing a safe and efficient activities of physical conditioning in the aquatic medium. Knowing that we are also in front of a special medium or practical tool that can facilitate a diversity of applications in different contexts and for different needs. As I said, I want to show you my experience, academic and research professional accumulated after more than 30 years, showing you evidence generated in our labs and by the research groups that I have led in recent decades. Several of our scientific works that corroborate the validity of the methods and procedures that I'm going to teach you in this inaugural lesson have already received more than 100 citations for other similar works of high scientific prestige. As a result of this arduous and passionate work, I can tell you that a lot of end-of-degree projects, end-of-master projects and doctoral thesis has been generated with more than 15 scientific articles have been published in the best scientific journals of the world. The contents that I'm going to show in this inaugural lesson are those that more than three decades ago I would have liked to learn, and it's now that in a clear, direct and totally applied way I'm showing them to you. Throughout this decade, with my scientific work, I have created numerous sufficient evidence that refute all those negative and little justified statements that limited the use of aquatic variable resistance, that is, physical training in the aquatic medium. The current evidence is overwhelming. The benefits that this medium provides are spectacular and, in addition, we already have proven methodological elements for their proper prescription. For all this, there are millions of people who can receive these benefits for health and physical performance regardless of the socioeconomic context in which they are. I'm sure that in the coming years we will be able to discover more evidence and ways of training. In fact, we are already working on it, but now, with total honesty, I give you all my knowledge that has borne from the case of her at four. The equity medium is an exceptional result with which to develop physical conditioning activities. However, the lack of knowledge of how to properly prescribe these activities before in it has limited the benefits of many of the proposals that are applied from this medium. Flotation, density, hydrostatic pressure and drug resistance are physical properties of water that must be taken into account for a correct prescription of physical exercise in this medium. Drug forces will facilitate adequate levels of muscular activity and cardiovascular demands. Flotation will facilitate stress reduction and joint aligning while facilitating both passive and dynamic freedom of movement. And hydrostatic pressure will favor important aspects of circulatory retard and respiratory process. Contrary to what was traditionally believed, eccentric muscle actions 
are present in the aquatic medium when training with both flotation and drag materials, as well as the need to develop physical conditioning activities in the aquatic medium at a thermoneutral temperature is also known today to guarantee a more comfortable and effective rehabilitation practice. All these and more concepts will be developed in two different parts below. The first will be titled Physical Properties of Water and its Influence on the Body. The second will title Intensity Control and Sensation Design. I hope with enthusiasm that everything that I'm going to expose to you next is of your total interest. The aquatic medium is a training tool that due to its specific properties make it unique. For all this, it's widely used in numerous contexts, both preventive and clinical, sport or rehabilitation. However, there are numerous publications and professionals who notice that it's not usually used properly because it's not employed in a correct way, and this puts in risk the safety and success of its applications. Due to the quality with which it must be prescribed in all areas of practical action, an analysis and understanding of these properties is necessary to guarantee their safe and efficient use. Based on this, the specific objective of this first part of the inaugural lesson is to know the properties and physical laws of exercise in the aquatic medium to guarantee an adequate prescription of exercises, sessions and programs. In the last 30 years, exercises performed in the aquatic medium have become one of the best options for citizens to employ their leisure time in a healthy way, as well as to improve physical condition and motor rehabilitation. However, it's essential that these activities are supervised by well-qualified professionals and, in addition, that they be performed from the knowledge and understanding of the physical properties that regulate the aquatic medium in order to apply them proper and safely. With this, I'm sure that can be obtained any object is desired. Of the physical properties of water that will be discussed below, the ones that will have the greatest impact on physical performance in the aquatic medium are density, flotation, and viscosity or resistance. Also, other valuable properties will also be developed for understanding important factors, such as temperature or an hydrostatic pressure. Archimedes' principle postulates that anybody immersed in a fluid experiences a vertical or hydrostatic upward thrust that will be equal to the weight of the volume of fluid dislodged. Thus, as the body immerses itself in the water, it moves, thus creating the hydrostatic thrust. If this vertical thrust is greater than the body weight, the body will float, and if the reverse occurs, the body will not float which will depend exclusively of the density of the body submerged in the water. Don't forget that it's possible to modify the effective density of the body, since if you breathe deeply, the lungs are filled with air increasing the volume, which which the resulting body density decrease. Therefore, density is the result of the relationship between the mass of the body and the volume it occupies. The density of the human body is slightly lower than that of water, although this statement largely depends on variables such as gender, race, age, lunch capacity, body composition, etc. As previously was indicated, as the body submerges, it displays a certain volume of water, which will create set hydrostatic thrust, which causes the feeling known as hypogravity. This characteristic reduces the load that our body supports, thus reducing the load supported by the joints, so that with a dive at neck level, the percentage of body weight supported is 8%, or what is the same, the compressive force in the joints is reduced by 92%. If the immersion is at the level of siphoid process, the percentage of body weight supported increased to 28% for men and 35% for women. And if the immersion is at the level of the upper eyelid crest, 54% of the body weight will be supported for the men and 47% for women. This property of water provides abilities that have been analyzed in various studies in the field of rehabilitation and physical conditioning. 
This will take case, for example, for the treatment of musculoskeletal injuries that require a partial or total release of the body load for rehabilitation. The increase in the strength of the lower limbs without compromising the joints or the improvement of cardiovascular responses also avoiding joint overload. Thus, it has been confirmed that the greater the drift of immersion, the lower the reaction forces in the vertical direction, which will allow to minimize muscle damage and the risk of injury without giving up the relevant adaptations. Hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that the water exerts on the surface of the body immersed in it, causing a transitory plastic deformation in the body, and is directly proportional to the density of the liquid, the depth of immersion of the body and gravity. Due to hydrostatic pressure, the body's responses to exercise in the aquatic medium are different from those in the land medium. These responses are mediated by the fact that this pressure causes the blood to travel upward through the lymphatic and venous systems, first towards the thighs, then towards the vessels of the abdominal cavity, and finally towards the great vessels of the thoracic cavity and heart, where return circulation is greatly facilitated. Therefore, the central blood volume increases and the cardiac volume increases, which causes the blood reaction volume to increase even at rest thus increasing the quantity of oxygen and nutrients in the muscles, in addition to a greater diffusion of metabolites created by the muscle into the blood. This increase in blood ejection volume is the explanation for why the hair rate drops between 12% and 50% when the human body is introduced into the aquatic medium. These fats create the ideal conditions for water to be an appropriate medium for the rehabilitation of cardiovascular and respiratory diseases such as the treatment of edema and varicose veins, as well as rehabilitation of the myocardial infarction and ischemic heart disease. This hydrostatic pressure also has an effect on the respiratory system, since it is affected by the movement of blood towards the thoracic cavity and, in addition, the water presses against the chest, with which the ventilatory mechanics is altered in such a way that the vital capacity decrease and total work increase when the body is submerged at the neck level. Thus, compared to training in the land medium, the training in the aquatic medium will suppose a higher workload for the respiratory muscles, which could thus improve the respiratory efficiency and therefore their physical performance. The dark forces are defined as the force that oppose two layers of fluid to separate and is determined by the coefficient of viscosity. In other words, it is the resistance that the liquid has to flow due to internal friction of its molecules, so that the more viscous a liquid is, the more resistant it would oppose to a movement performed in it. Thus, the greater resistance that water opposes compared to air is not only due to its density, but also to its viscosity which is finally responsible of, for the three types of resistance that appear in the aquatic medium. Therefore, water can offer three types of resistance, friction, wave and frontal shape, of which the last two are generally the most important in the performance of water activities. It's important to know that the larger the surface that both movement in the water, the greater resistance generated. This creates an area of high pressure in the front in the direction of movement and another of low pressure in the rear, where the laminar flow of water is replaced by the turbulent flow. But in a highly portal weight, it should be known that it's even more decisive that the resistance generated is directly proportional to the square of the speed, so that said resistance increase exponential expansionality when increase the speed at which the element or body segment move in the water. At this point, if we want to take advantage of the resistance offered by the water, it's necessary to take into account various factors related to the aquatic physical exercise. The first of them is the load of inertia formulated by Newton, so that its interpretation led us to think that at first it should act on a stopped water moving it. But by the same law, this mass of water will continue in motion. So, if we want to continue exercising force on said mass of water, we must influence an active execution until the end of the movement in order to continue accelerating it. 
Other factors that affect the resistance offered during aquatic exercise are the liver are uses, the size of the resistant material used and the hydrodynamics of the movement. Finally, it should be known that the fact of performing high speed movements in the aquatic medium to increase the resistance that this medium offers to movement produce a high asynchronous muscle activation of the muscle groups that are antagonistic to the movement to stop the movement and to guarantee joint safety together with the production of an explosive movement in the opposite direction, if so decide. Water has thermodynamic characteristics that can be useful in the field of physical conditioning. It's known that the water has a higher heat capacity that is 1000 times higher than air, which means that it has great potential to retain heat or cold and maintain a constant temperature. In addition, water is also a very efficient conductor, since compared to air it transmits heat 25 times faster. Taking into account all of this about and knowing that the heat capacity of the person is less than that of water, it will result that the human body will be the one that adapts to the temperature of the water and not the other way around. In the aquatic medium, different range of temperatures considered suitable for different activities has been established, which has been raised to a concept called thermoneutral temperature which can be defined as the temperature that the water must have for the mechanics of thermoregulation of the exerciser are not stimulated, or do that as little as possible, neither to generate heat nor to dissipate it. But the truth is that although this thermoneutral temperature is widely accepted for rest at 35 uh, Celsius degrees, there is not much consensus on the thermoneutral temperature for aquatic exercise. A temperature of 27 Celsius degree is usually recommended, although this value may vary depending on the population and activity. Other authors consider a temperature between 26 Celsius degrees and 30 Celsius degree for what is called intense exercise. And finally, the Aquatic Exercise Association of the United States of America indicates a range between 28 Celsius degree and 31 Celsius degree, depending on whether the aquatic fitness program are of high or low intensity. More specifically, they indicate that the temperature should be between 28 to 30 Celsius degree for aquatic fitness programs, 30 to 32 degrees Celsius for flexibility activities, and 32 to 35 degrees Celsius for, temper for therapy and rehabilitation activities. Typically, therapeutic pools tend to have a temperature between 33 Celsius degree and 35 Celsius degree, while conventional pools, which are located in the typical aquatic sports facilities of an any city, oscillate in the temperature range between 27 Celsius degrees and 29 Celsius degrees. Understanding how to control the intensity during the exercise performed in the aquatic medium is an essential requirement with which to guarantee the efficacy and safety of the rehabilitation of physical conditioning sessions. Given the specific properties and laws of this medium, it's not always done properly and everless so when it must be included in a measured way in a perfect design adaptation process. For all these reasons, the objectives of this part of the inaugural lecture is critical analyze and understand the most important aspects of the prescription of the exercise in the aquatic medium which we to guarantee an adequate control of the intensity during the activities and sessions developed in the specific areas of physical conditioning and readaptation. The investigation has shown that exercise in the aquatic medium have many beneficial effects on physical fitness when prescribed properly. The use of exercise in the aquatic medium to improve both aerobic capacity and strength is supported by strong evidence, while moderate evidence support is used to improve flexibility and there is currently inconclusive evidence regarding its effects on body composition. 
Various investigations emphasize that great attention should be paid to the exact quantification of the intensity of exercise in the aquatic medium, especially for the exercise that aims to improve strength, being able to follow proposals such as those of our research group that have been shown in different investigations that we have published in the last decades. With regard to the intensity control, and more specifically with reference to strong strain in the aquatic medium, recent studies suggest that exercises in the aquatic medium can be considered as a potential model to improve muscle strain in all types of populations. In general, it is known that the adaptations that are produced in the aquatic medium are similar in terms of improvement in strength and endurance to those obtained in dry land. Also, there are still lack clear evidence in the proper prescription in the aquatic medium. In some studies performed by our research group, we have demonstrated how the use of the onerous scale of perceived assertion together with a specific number of repetitions help to produce significant training adaptations in stress training in the aquatic medium. That is, this method shows that in each of the series carried out must be performed as many repetitions as are necessary with a character of local effort of the submaximal type, which has been adjusted to a previous prescribed value that can range from 6 to 9 of a maximum of 10. With reference to other different ways of dosing the appropriate intensity during the aquatic stroke training, in other previous studies we conducted, we saw it another alternative way to control the intensity of stress training exercise performed in the aquatic medium. This new method consists of using an acoustic or visual metronome to identify a cadence of movement that is used to complete a certain number of repetitions and maximum or near maximum effort. The number of repetitions should be inside the optimal range for the goal of the person performing the exercise. In this way, it will be possible to define the prescribed resistance that the aquatic stress exercise would provide as the resistance offered by the aquatic medium to the movement and that can be quantified according to the cadence with which the different movements are carried out. Therefore, the same intensity can be achieved and reproduced with a resistance exercise performed in the aquatic medium as long as subsequent sets of the same exercise maintain the same initial current of movement, the same equipment and the same technique to execute at the end. Therefore, the intensity of the strength training in the aquatic medium can be easily modified in a quantifiable way simple by modifying the cadence or pace of the movement. In a study that we performed in 2013, we verified that when training in the aquatic medium, different size and type of devices, that is, drag and float devices, can provoke similar muscle activation when the movement is performed at maximum speed. Specifically, in this study, we were able to conclude that when performing a neuromuscular exercise for a strength training at maximum speed in the aquatic medium, the use of different materials will generate the same muscle activation of both the agonist movement muscle and the core muscles. Therefore, neuromuscular stress training in the aquatic medium is a feasible option, where the levels of the muscle activation achieved are adequate for both movement, agonist muscle, strengthening and core muscles. A very relevant conclusion that was also obtained in this study was that any material could be suitable to achieve maximum muscle activation of the agonist and core stabilizers. Also, to perform a complete session, it will be necessary to remember the advantages and disadvantages of the different drug and flotation devices for choosing among tools that are more adequate. Consequently, the most relevant finding that we obtained in this study was that the intensity of the stress training in the aquatic medium with the material would be determined by the speed of execution. However, in collective situation in which the pace of execution is characterizing for all the exercisers at the same time, it's recommended to change and adapt the size of the material to each subject to be able to individualize the intensity that is received due to the speed of execution, it cannot be modified. In this case, the use of a drug material makes a lot of sense, since as the execution speed will, will be the same for all exercises. 
the resistance that we water will offer will be greater or lesser depending on the size of the device used by each of them. This will allow all exercises to exercise at the same pace, allowing faster cadence to be left for later moments in a training progression when these exercises will be adapted. In this case, it will be necessary to choose the ultimate size of the material for each exercise and adjust it perfectly also with the character of the perceived effort assigned to each one of them at the end of each series. In other study that we performed in 2014, we analyzed the neuromuscular exercise of strength in the lower limbs. In this study, it was possible to conclude that 1. Muscle activation in an exercise in the aquatic medium is the same regardless of the material use and is characteristic both in site that is large or small and in property that is resistant of rotation. 2. The activation of the core muscles in the aquatic medium is the same regardless of the material use and its characteristics, both in terms of size and property. Moreover, from this study, we are able to extract the following practical applications. 1. Science neither the size of the material nor its property influence muscle activation when the movement is performed at maximum speed. Technicians of aquatic activities that include stress physical conditioning in a upright position could choose from a wide variety of possibilities to achieve its objectives. 2. In this sense, the principle of variety will become relevant since the stimuli that these materials will offer will oscillate between high speeds for small materials and low speeds for large materials, so that this will not influence the final result because it would be the same activation for the muscle being trained. 3. However, the choice of material must be according to the possibilities and characteristics of each individual, always taking care that the postural and execution technique are correct because a poorly trained subject or with some pathology could not tolerate well an exercise at maximum speed. Four, in this sense, a progression could be established that goes from the use of large resistant material, since it implies lower execution speed, to the use of a small area of rotation materials, higher speed, so that a controlled and adequate transition to explosive work is provoked. Five, on the other hand, a monotony in the use of materials will mean a decrease in the motivation of the exerciser, so that with the alternation of materials, the opposite effect will be achieved, that is, a greater motivation of the practitioner without influence the final result. Other investigations have indicated that although the devices are used to increase the overload in the resistance exercises in the aquatic medium, it seems that this will negatively affect the high speed of the movement due to the increase in the area frontal that it could reduce the speed of movement and consequently cause an insufficient stimulus for the neuromuscular adaptations that are intended, especially in those populations that are fragile or during the first stage of a training progression. Research shows that there is a significant improvement in training results when a maximum speed of movement is used through the training period, as well as the showing that there are no positive results for two shorter training programs that start with speeds lower at advance at a high or maximum speed at the end of the training program. Therefore, Regarding the control of the intensity of resistance training in the aquatic medium, is known that 1. If no devices are used, the effectiveness of the aquatic exercise is maintained even when the objective of the training is other physical qualities. 2. Dryland exercises can be replaced by water exercises if they are developed with similar characteristics. 3. Intensity can be controlled by variation in the speed movement, allowing progressive overload for neuromuscular system to adapt during aquatic strength training. Regarding the adequate profundity of immersion during stress training in the aquatic medium, we verified in a study that we performed in 2013 that developing the exercise at a lower profundity of immersion with respect to a greater one allows a higher muscular activation of the extremities. Therefore, 
If maximum muscle activation of the extremities is required, the profundity of immersion at the level of cephoid is better option than the profundity of the immersion at the level of the clavicle. In addition, we again verify that the type of training device is not relevant as long as it's mobilized at the highest possible execution speed. Regarding the current muscles, we verify that a lower profundity of immersion will modify the muscular activation since it will generate a greater appendicular resistance to the movement that must be compensated by the core muscles to guarantee an adequate ergonomics of the movement. In this sense, we discovered that a greater profundity of immersion reduced the muscle activation of the agonist and this condition could be equated to training in the unstable conditions in the dry land. Although more disturbing in the case of exercise in the aquatic medium, where the activation of the core musculature is lower when comparing the same movement with a lower profundity of immersion. In 2009, we published a study in which an exclusive stress training was applied in the aquatic medium, and it showed a clear increase in the maximum strength of the muscle group of the upper extremities in young, healthy and fit men. In this study, a strength training program in the aquatic medium demonstrated to have a positive effect on reducing body fats, as well as being an effective training method to increase maximum strength and fat-free mass. As in the exercise on land, these effects appear when a correct and progressive design of the program is established, so the resistance offered by the water in each of the series and exercise must be controlled. In the aquatic medium, progressive and well-adapted increase of the load or resistance can be applied as long as the subjects use aquatic devices with which they have already been previously evaluated to find a cadence or pace of movement per minute for each exercise that allows them to perform a certain number of repetitions at the perceived intensity initially prescribed by the trainer. However, for this resource to be valid, we must also make sure that the subjects always maintain the same length of the liver arm, the same position of the segments and use, if is the case, the same devices that increase the drug forces. These findings are applicable to settings as diverse as rehabilitation, athletic performance, health and aesthetics. The results of another study that we performed in 2014 showed that the order of the exercises inside the same session during concurrent training performed in the aquatic medium influenced the magnitude of the gains in the strength and muscle mass, since individuals who performed stress training before aerobic exercise achieved greater maximum dynamic force adaptations and greater muscle mass. It's possible that this is because residual fatigue after aerobic training can result in a lower maximum speed of movement, generating lower maximum force and lower total work in the extremity exercises. The aquatic medium is a low impact alternative to learn to participate in physical exercise and rehabilitation programs. As we were able to verify in several studies performed in 2009 and 2010, the aquatic medium might be preferable to ensure neuromuscular performance associated with the mechanical energy production phase during propulsion of the body. Therefore, the aquatic medium is characterized by lower impact forces and greater mechanical power during the jam. This evidence that we discovered gives support to recommend exercise and rehabilitation programs in the aquatic medium as an alternative or complement to the activities performed in the dry land. Immersion in water affects jumping mechanics. It is known that older adults and physically disconditioned people produce better results of maximum and average mechanical power in jumps performed in water than in tools performed on dry land. As we verified in these previous studies of our research group, the ability to generate maximum muscular strength is not negatively affected in the aquatic medium, as we verified with explosive movement such as jumps preferred at maximum effort in the aquatic medium. It seems that efficiency in neuromuscular performance during jumps in the aquatic medium is greater than is equivalent performed in the dry land medium with only the own body weight. In addition, we verify that jumping in the aquatic medium generates less direct joint stress together with a better possibility 
of actively absorbing the remaining impact. One of the most important novelties found in the present study that we have just performed in our laboratory is in reference to bone health generated by the stress training in the aquatic medium. Since the flotation property of water reduces the impact, exercises in the aquatic medium have usually been considered to have a low osteogenic effect. However, the results of our study don't agree with this statement, since despite the fact that the literature postulates that training on land could be more effective than in the aquatic medium to promote positive change in both tissue in all the people, the group that trained in the aquatic medium was the one that obtained the most significant improvement. The difference of the results with respect to the dry land exercises is probably due to the difference in the speed of execution performed, since in the aquatic medium to optimize the drag forces all movements are done with a fast execution cadence unlike land exercises that usually use moderate execution cadence. In this sense, the scientific literature has shown that training focus on muscle power can be more effective in optimizing the benefits of the bone health. Strength is the ability of a muscle to generate work and power is defined as the product of force and speed. So that power training is characterized by the high speed of muscle shortening. It has been shown that the speed load of applied tension influences the osteogenic capacity of the exercise. In summary, it can be indicated that although execution speed does not seem to be a clear differentiation factor to develop motor performance variables such as those include inside the functional capacity or in symmetric strengths, is a key element to improve other variables such as isokinetic strengths and even to improve or maintain bone health as well. Due to the risk of injury, the older people can occur during dryland training, performing high speed movements for training in the aquatic medium is presented as an effective strategy to positive influence in their bone health. A very important aspect that must be taken into account in reference to the core prescription of physical conditioning exercise in the aquatic medium and more specifically when we talk about the cardiovascular exercises is that for monitoring its intensity by means of the working heart rate it must be taken into account that in the swimming pool the working heart rate will be reduced between 10 and 17 beats per minute if compared to the working heart rate that will be obtained in the dry land medium for the same intensity. This reduction in the working heart rate is due to an increase in central blood volume caused by hydrostatic pressure which will consequently increase the ejection volume and decrease the heart rate, keeping the cardiac output constant. This difference decreases in the salut area directly related to the profundity of the immersion, that is, the lower the immersion, the smaller the difference. In addition to the control of the working heart rate, current scientific findings also suggest that the perception of effort can be used effectively for prescription of exercise intensity during aerobic programs in the aquatic medium in an expensive and easy way, being additionally a highly efficient to be adapted to the characteristics of the different individuals. In a very specific way, the following aspects must be taken into account in order to optimize the performance of aerobic exercises in the aquatic medium. The upper extremities will always be used very actively to increase the intensity of the exercise. All movements must be performed with the greatest amplitude and energy possible. What is really important is to generate a physiological stretch that cause specific adaptations. It becomes secondary that the execution of the movement is as similar as possible to the one that occurs of land if it is not the objective. In addition, a wide range of movements can be performed that will improve and expand the motor resources of its exercises. Research has also identified a lower frequency of the running cycle in the aquatic exercise due to the difference between mediums and the involvement of the upper extremities. In addition, the fact of experiencing hypogravity means that the non habituated don't know how to increase the intensity of the effort, and when they increase it, they place such an emphasis that they exceed the intensity zone and which they wanted to exercise. 
Another added element that can alter the physiological demands in the deep area of the pool, if compared to the land race, is that in the lighter, the most requested muscle groups are the large muscles of the lower extremities, while in the aquatic medium, these muscle groups lose an important part of their role, which is partially assumed by the muscle groups of the upper extremities. Therefore, to increase the muscular demand of the upper extremities, it is necessary to use resistant gloves that increase the requirement for said muscle groups and with this increase the metabolic demand. Summarizing some of the contributions, it should be considered that in aerobic training in the deep area of the pool from running exercises, a flotation element such as, as the bell should be used. This material allows a better movement technique while facilitating the use of the upper extremities to increase the intensity of the exercise. It will also be taken into account as a characteristic aspect of aerobic fitness training in the aquatic medium that all movements must be performed with the greatest amplitude and energy possible, in addition to involving the greatest number of extremities whenever possible. Regarding the use of cycling in the aquatic medium to improve physical fitness, in 2019 we published a study in which we validate the aquatic cycling scale to control intensity. In this study, we verified that this scale is a low-cost, quickly applicable and easily understood instrument that can contribute to the efficacy and safety in the prescription of exercises. Therefore, this scale can be recommended for using in water cycling by professionals of physical exercises and rehabilitation because it will ensure a much more precise control of the activity that is being developed. Therefore, its efficacy and safety will be guaranteed and the methodology will be improved. This study also showed that a brief increase in water pedaling cadence of 15 beats per minute will increase the intensity of the water pedaling exercise. As you have been able to observe a total professional life, I have dedicated to physical conditioning and particularly to training with variable resistance, in this case through physical exercise in the aquatic medium. Below, I summarize some of the most relevant conclusions of this applied part of my inaugural lecture. The intensity control during the development of activities and sessions for neuromuscular stress training will be based on one of the following aspects. 1. Control the number of repetitions according to the target objective together with the character of the submaximal effort that is previously determined just at the end of the series. Two. Determinate the maximum repetitions at a determinate and controlled cadence, and secondly, work on maximum or submaximum repetition range with this cadence. 3. Quantify the maximum number of repetitions during a certain execution time according to the objective to be achieved. It should also be highlighted in order to guarantee the reproducibility of the stimulus for neuromuscular stress training in the aquatic medium that it should always be considered the aerodynamic position, the lever R, the profundity of immersion, the range of movement and the type of material. With reference to cardiovascular conditioning, it should be known that during aerobic exercises in the aquatic medium, there will be reductions of between 10 and 17 heartbeats with respect to the dry land medium as well as that the level of immersion and the body position will determine a different cardiac response to the same intensity of the effort. The exercises will seek to be little aerodynamic to increase resistance to movement and thus facilitate the appropriate intensity. The joint use of the upper extremities will facilitate reaching the chosen levels of intensity. In addition, it should not be forgotten that in general the perception of the effort will be a useful tool for controlling intensity during the development of activities and physical conditioning sessions in the aquatic medium. To end this inaugural lecture, I want to show you the following video as an example of some of the educational and professional activities that they have developed in different countries regarding proper physical conditioning training in the aquatic medium. I trust that this inaugural lesson has been of your interest and remain at your disposal for everything you need. 
I take again the opportunity to thank to Dr. Jose Antonio Perez Turpin for giving me this opportunity to be here with all of you. I only wish to see you again in the following editions of this prestigious event. Best regards.